coaches, welcome back to the channel. Now in today's interview, Coach Leo had the opportunity to sit down and speak with Coach Matt. Matt is the owner of MJR Academy based in Los Angeles, California. He shares how he got started, how he got his first couple of clients um, in his business. He recently moved to California. Um, he moved his business there. And if you're a coach that lives in LA or around that area, uh, and you're in soccer training, you should connect with him. We'll put his social media links right below this and uh, sit back and enjoy the interview. All right, cool. So Matt, tell us a bit about your, your coaching journey and how you got into business. Absolutely. So uh, I got started into coaching actually through my goalkeeper coach, who I was doing one-on-one -on -one training with uh, starting when I was about 14. Uh, I worked with him all through high school and into college. And when I got to college, actually one of the reasons why I got into coaching was because uh, I wanted to get more training in, like during college season. And um, a way to do that was to work with my goalkeeper coach and, and kind of help him coach. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to get extra training and, and he kind of expressed to me, hey, one of the best ways to learn is to teach. Yeah. You know, that, that's because because yeah. then it reinstills the skill sets in your mind and, you know, your brain absorbs the information more as you explain it. So that was kind of like my motivation for getting into doing one on one training when I was in college. Um, it's like I just want to be around training all day. That, yeah. So I would go and watch him uh, coach for hours. I would, after school, I'll go there and just watch him train and coach and then he would kind of explain things to me and you know how to coach at appropriate times when when to point things out when not to point things out and kind of explaining the psychology behind coaching mm -hmm. um and then i just love doing it like from there and then I, I started getting my own clients and and uh and then after college it was like okay i need to make a little bit of money now i was still trying to play um you know, i was just trying out for semi-pro teams and playing on amateur teams so I was like, okay, I need to make a little bit of money. Uh, I can keep coaching. And so I just kept, you know, all right, let me get clients. I started coaching at a high school and a club. Uh, and it just kind of grew from there. And, and, and uh, it, was, it was just something I knew I could always do on the side. It was like, I just love doing, I love being around the game. And now it wasn't, I, I never had the desire to be a head coach. That was never my thing. I just liked working with goalkeepers and specializing and working. I liked working one on one with players. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun to me. Awesome, awesome. So you are you are a goalkeeper coach? Yeah. So I'm a goalkeeper coach. I've I've always been a goalkeeper. So I really enjoy just work specializing in that position and just yeah. you know working with one goalkeeper for years and seeing that progression over time. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So you you currently have a, a goalkeeper coaching well training business, right? So tell us a little bit yes. more. What do you guys specialize in then? Yeah, so I have the MJR Keeper Academy. Uh, it's just my initials. Um, so yeah, basically, I just I it's the same thing I just described. I, I just work with goalkeepers mostly one on one. Uh, I do do small groups as well, um, and I have worked uh at a few different clubs and, and uh out of college division two college in northern california I, I was goalkeeper coach there for about seven years but um which kind of helps i guess it helps with my resume when i'm acquiring clients you know they see that i coached at a college for a long time and you know i have you know so many other clubs on my background that kind of helps to for the parents so they, okay, this guy has experience. He knows what he's doing. Um, so with the MJR Keeper Academy, it's kind of a way to make it a little bit more professional and not just I'm some random guy. You know what I mean? It's like, it's solidified. It's like, okay, I have experience. I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to build a community of goalkeepers and, and helping them thrive. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that's kind of like my main focus with it. Awesome. So do you have a favorite, a favorite age group that you enjoy working with? 
Oh man, that's a good question. It varies because like sometimes I love working with the younger kids, you know, like 10 to 12 because mm -hmm. they're just getting into it and they're, they're, they're just excited to be there and they want to learn as much as they can. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also love working with like older uh, clients that are, you know, in high school going into college mm -hmm. because they're dedicated and they're like, they're ready to go. They're like, you know, they're thinking about possibly playing at the next level. So I love going into the details a little bit more with them and kind of breaking things down on a really small scale. Uh, so yeah, it, it varies. It, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like working with, with both. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So um, what, what has been your, your biggest obstacle since starting your goalkeeping training business? Um, that's a good question. Uh, honestly, being in Los Angeles, probably the most difficult is finding good field space uh, and finding fields that are available when I need them. Uh, that can be really challenging uh, at times. And so that takes a little bit of uh, planning on my part, you know, making sure the field is going to be available, it's decent grass, um, things like that. Just, you know, being organized. Mm -hmm. uh, to find fit because I just moved down here about five months ago. So I'm s still finding all the little fields and spaces that I can use. Yeah. Uh, so th that takes a little bit of time to make sure I get down. But um, I'd say another challenge is um, finding clients that are, I guess, I don't know what the word to use, but I guess dedicated enough to like want to keep doing it because some of them just want to try it out and see if, if their kid is into it or not. They don't really know. Mm -hmm. So they go, they go into it kind of hesitant and just like, well, we're just going to test it out. But yeah. they, they don't quite understand that it takes months to really like see progress and to see something come out of it. You know, it's not something you can just do one session, one or two sessions and then you're done. Mm -hmm. you know it's 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 an ongoing process uh, so sometimes I think parents and clients don't quite get that part of it yeah cool so when because that's something basically we we teach our coaches and how to when they bring on clients how to how to make them more committed so mm -hmm. when you bring on new clients what's sort of the the, the process that that you yeah have so you enroll them Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's a simple simple process. I mean, I I only do book them for one session at a time. I have had clients that have booked multiple sessions, or like mm -hmm. they'll just pay ahead of time for the next month or whatever. Um, I don't have like a uh, I don't pitch them something like that. I I'm sure I could, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just I say hey, you know, they contact me and they want to do a session. Okay. I just set up one session and most of the time they want to try it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'd say about 80 to 90% of the time they book the next session. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty rare that they don't book a next session. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it, I just kind of go like that every week. They'll check in or I'll, I'll check in with them and see if they want to book the next session, yeah. um, which has worked fairly well. But I think I could implement a, you know, packages and things like that where it's, mm -hmm more concrete, like, Hey, I, I'll, I offer this, this package of a month or three months of, of training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what is, what's two things you look for when you, when you bring on a new client? Um, I think one of the biggest things I look for is attitude. Uh, you know, what's their attitude? Are they happy to be there? Do they want to be there? Does it seem like they're forced to be there? Because I want to get them out of that. I want to make sure they want to be there and that they're having fun. So I want I want them to be, want to be there. You know, I don't want to have to like drag drag their feet through each you know drill and session. It's like I want it, and if I can sense that, I'm gonna you know try to you know get on their level and try to get them out of that shell and, and make it fun and, and exciting and get them to to get motivated. Um, I look for, uh, you know, I don't really necessarily care about their skill level. You know, they could be any, they could be just, I have a lot of clients that are just beginning. 
Like they've never had goalkeeper coaching before. And I love that. So I, I guess I want keepers that, you know, aren't afraid to be there, aren't afraid to work hard. You know, they want to come there no matter what level they're at, they're going to come there and work hard and, and get the most out of the time. Um, and I don't necessarily want to make, like force that on them. I want them to come ready to, to, mm. to train hard. Cool. I like that. So question for you then, another one is where, where do you see private training going in the US in the next two to five years? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I could definitely see it growing and becoming more uh, solidified, like not just with goalkeeping. Because goalkeeper training has always been there because so, especially in America, clubs, even club soccer, they don't have dedicated goalkeeper coaches. You know, some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them have like goalkeeper coaches that are there once every two weeks or whatever. And it's just not enough. Like goal, goalkeepers need the extra training. Yeah. But I can totally see how personal training for all positions and, and, and other sports growing because I think people are starting to realize they need individual attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially just with the way our society is nowadays, you know, yeah. like with, with social media and everything, everyone needs their attention and they, they need on them. And I think that's going to translate to sports and mm-hmm. they're going to want the individualized attention uh, mm-hmm. to help them grow their skills and, and uh, maximize their potential. And, and I think they'll see the benefits of that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely think it's going to grow and, and become much more uh common yeah yeah definitely agree definitely agree so for for someone that's been coaching goalkeepers for for a while now Mm -hmm. what would you say a good quality coaching session for for goalkeepers looks like so describe it what a good session is yeah um a good session is uh a session that has a specific purpose and topic. Uh, so what I usually do when I'm writing a session, I'll start with the topic and I'll start with uh, the drills in the goal and then I'll work back backwards to the warm up drills. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always want to start with what am I working on? What, what, what am I trying to get through to the, the client? Um, and I think a good session runs smoothly. The, all the drills are set up before the client gets there. Um, there's no time wasted with setting things up. Uh, I think uh, so like maximizing the time that you're there with, with the client is super important. Uh, and so everything runs smoothly. There's a specific purpose for each drill. Um, and, and I think a good session needs to be uh, a little bit um, geared towards each client. So you may have to st- you know, switch things around a little bit for each client. So if I'm doing one session for the day, one topic, and I'm working with three or four different clients all on, all on the same topic, I might switch things around depending on their skill level, their age level, mm-hmm. just to make it a little bit more, um, a little more detailed to that specific client. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's important. Uh, so yeah, just, I think overall, a smooth session that doesn't waste time that has a specific topic and purpose in mind. Um, and, uh, and of course you want the client to come up, get something out of it after each session, even if it's a one small thing, if they can get that one small thing out of the session, then I did my job right. Yeah. Awesome. So do you, do you go to watch your clients play? Uh, not usually, not usually. Um, I would love to, I think, it's tough being in Los Angeles. A lot of my clients live kind of far away and <laughs> games are all over the place. Um, but I'm definitely, you know, if they wanted me to, I would definitely do it. Yeah. Uh, would definitely, definitely be interested in that. I used to do that more when I was coaching with like call, obviously college and high school mm. and, and, and uh, club where you're more inclined to go watch the games and, yeah kind of coach the keeper at the game Mm -hmm. um yeah i haven't done so much of that with my private clients yeah 
Awesome. So what what some of the coaches we do when, when that we work with, they, they go out to watch their clients play in matches. Now, this could be basketball. Mm. It could be soccer. So if you were mm. going to, uh, to watch your clients play, mm. um, especially, obviously, you coach goalkeepers, what's, what are three things you look for mm. when, they're, when uh, they're in a game situation? Yeah, so I definitely look at... Um, I think number one for me is their uh, mentality. So how are they, how are they communicating to their teammates? How are they organizing their teammates? How are they uh, basically interacting with them? What's their body language like during the game? Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm, I'm looking for if they're implementing, implementing, implementing any of the techniques and tactics we, we went through during the session. So are they, you know, are they setting properly? Are they setting at the right angles? Are they going out for high balls the way we talked about? Things like that. Um, and then I'm looking for uh, how they deal with failure. I think that's one of the main things. I want to see, because in training, I, I, want, I always tell them, my, my clients, I want you to fail. This is why you come to work with me. This is where you mess up and fail. And it, and we're going to work through it. We're going to, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll break things down. We'll understand why you failed in yeah. this instance. But in a game, you don't have that. You can't pause and, and talk about it and figure it out. So I want to see how they react to letting a goal go in. Or they, mm -hmm. they let a ball drop through their hands or, you know, they just mess up. I want to see how they come back from that. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a huge thing, especially for young goalkeepers. You know, if, if they fail or they mess they make a mistake and they their head goes down low and they they kind of just are are down and you know mentally they're out of the game now and they're not going to be able to it's gonna be really hard for them to get back in mm -hmm. so i want to make sure they their mentality is good after they make a mistake mm -hmm. so that and if i see that then i'm gonna take note of it and i'll talk to them at the next session about that cool excellent i love, love that love that so working with young players what what would you say in in today's times is one thing that a lot of kids are lacking mm. would, would you say it's the technical side of the game would you say it's the mental side what's that one thing that kids need today um i think both of those for sure a lot mm. of kids don't have proper training and their, their technique and their, their coaches kind of their head coaches don't really give them any specific guidance. They're just like, Hey, save the ball, you know? So that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the training they get. Uh, ment I think mentally is, is a big thing. Um, so I, I have a podcast that's just for goalkeepers. That's just focused on the mental side of goalkeeping. Mm -hmm. I think that's super important. I always think kids need to work on that. But one thing that I think is kind of underrated, especially for American players that I noticed with most of my clients is they don't watch the game. You know, they, they don't, I always ask my clients, so when, when was the last soccer game you watched? Like, what do you watch MLS? Do you watch Premier League, La Liga? And most of them say, no, I don't watch soccer. Yeah. And I think, I think that's something in today's day and age shouldn't be an answer because there's no excuse not to watch a game. You can go on YouTube anytime and watch highlights or you can watch live mm -hmm. games from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So I really think, Today, kids need to be watching more soccer. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know it's hard because American parents don't always watch soccer. You know, they don't have that on the TV. They're usually watching football or basketball or baseball. Yeah. Uh, but I think kids need to start taking more time to, to study the game and, and, and watch it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I always tell my clients, like, you need to be watching soccer. At least once a week, you should be watching. Because that, that's how we learn. Right? And Absolutely. That, that, like, yeah, going back to the beginning of why I started coaching, it was because I wanted to learn by watching. I wanted to study other goalkeepers. Mm -hmm. and, and a way you can do that anytime is just at home on your tablet or your phone. You can be watching games. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think that's, you know, probably a lot of coaches wouldn't say that, but I think that's super important right now. And that can, mm -hmm. that's for any sport, of course, you know, basketball, mm -hmm. football, baseball. You should be watching 
games and taking notes and, and studying it. Yes, it's fun to watch. It's entertainment, but mm -hmm. you can be trained. You can look at it as like training. Like, oh, I get a, I'm going to watch a soccer game and that's my training for today. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. So let me take you back, Matt, when you, when you first started your, your training business then. Mm -hmm. So tell it, tell us a bit about how you, how did you get your first client? Yeah, my first client um, was working with the high school. So I was coaching uh, the goalkeepers for the high school and then one of the keepers became my client. Um, and so starting out, I think that's probably the best way to get clients uh, is to work with, for, for soccer specifically, to work with a club uh, or a high school. And that's kind of like your foot in the door to you know, you're coaching them every week. You see them all the time. Now you can say, hey, you know, when, when the season ends or something, you can say, hey, if you want to keep training, we can do that. We, you know, we can set up sessions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, yeah, that's how I did it. Um, and then it can kind of grow from there. You know, definitely word of mouth helps a lot. You know, that keeper will tell another keeper from their club team or or so on, you know, tell their, their other goalkeeper friends. Um, so yeah, that's that's how it went in the beginning. Awesome. And how how many goalkeepers are you currently working with at the moment? Right now, I'm only at about four because I just moved down here, so I'm still establishing myself in this area. Yeah. Um, but I just started working with a club, so I'm sure mm -hmm. I'll be, be getting more more clients through that. You, you're going to be ten x in that very soon. Yeah. It, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I know. I'm kind of worried about it. <laughs> I'm really busy. <laughs> Cool, awesome. So tell us, tell us a bit about your your current sales process. Then, how how do you do you get new clients, and what what is the sales process in your business? Yeah, so um, right now I'm getting clients actually uh, uh, through my website. I've been getting quite a few, um, which you know I didn't have a website before. I just built that five months ago, four months ago when I moved down here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's definitely helped a lot. Uh, I, I was kind of surprised actually that I was mm -hmm. getting people contacting me through the website. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so right now they, they use the sale process goes, they, they find my information either through word of mouth or, or through our website. Um, and then they contact me. So they'll usually email and then I just, uh, through the email, I let them know what the, the rate is per hour, where training locations are, uh, and what to expect during the sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's that's the sales process for the most part. Awesome. Awesome. And how, how do you market your business normally? Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm on YouTube and uh, Instagram and Facebook, and then... Uh, I have a podcast that I put out that kind of helps with, with getting people, um, you know, into, into my world. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I also use coach up, uh, as well. I'm not sure if you, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Coach up. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. yeah. So I have a profile in there. So I occasionally get, get people contacting me through there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it being in Los Angeles, you know, it's definitely helpful because there's so many people here and mm -hmm. so many people are, are looking in different ways. So you kind of have to put your fingers in a lot of different pots mm -hmm. of trying to reach people. Um, but I, I would say probably the most effective uh, is working with a club or, or high school, something like that. It's just yeah. because you're face to face with them, they, they get to know you, they, you mm -hmm. build that trust and rapport with them over time and then they become your client. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's much easier to establish yourself with them through that if you're seeing them on a regular basis. Yeah, excellent. So with the with the with the four clients you currently have, uh, how long have they they been with you? Uh, two of them they've been with me since probably since right when I moved down here, so about four months, five months. Okay. Um, and then a couple of them are new, newer from probably like two or three weeks ago. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So, so what would you say to a, co a, a goalkeeper coach who, who's coming across this video, watching, 
or even listening mm -hmm. and they want to do what you're doing in the sense that mm -hmm. they want to start a, a, a private training business like what would be yeah. a couple of bits of advice you would you would give to them yeah i would honestly i would the first thing i would do is i would um reach out to another goalkeeper coach who's, who's been doing it for a long time and i would ask to just come watch his sessions and ask some questions and just kind of learn from him so basically kind of like finding a mentor mm -hmm. uh, who can help you walk through some things and um help you you know walk, walk you through how to set up sessions um how to find fields how to get organized i think that's really important uh another thing is is having all of the necessary equipment mm -hmm. uh, you know if, if you're just starting out you know that might be a little bit you know of an investment because equipment can be expensive uh especially like in soccer like i have my own go uh, net mm -hmm. that i can set up on grass anywhere um which is a bit expensive but it was worth it for me to have so i don't need to find a soccer field i can train at a park with mm -hmm. good grass i can set up my goal anywhere and i think that's super vital so you might have to make an investment in the beginning to to get all the proper equipment and of course balls are are expensive you know and, you know you want to be properly set up um mm -hmm. and then i would say to to network and, and get get in with some clubs you know start working with them helping them out um you know things like that like are going to help you a lot which is and just getting experience coaching um mm -hmm. just doing as much as you can work work with younger like little kids you know ages yeah. six to eight you know mm -hmm. learn how to deal with them you know what, what my goalkeeper coach always taught me was if you if if you can coach an eight-year-old if you can explain to them goalkeeping and, and the tactics and skills then you can coach professional because <laughs> Trying to get a six-year-old or eight-year-old to understand what you're talking about and get and get through to them is much yeah. more difficult than trying to explain it to a 22-year-old who, who's playing professional. Yeah. So be able to coach young kids. You know that I think that's super important. Like you need to be able to work with them. Hundred um, percent. That's going to help your your foundation for understanding the game because you need to break it down on such a like simple level. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to explain everything to an eight-year-old. Yeah. If they don't understand you, then no one's going to understand you. Yeah. Yeah. 100% agree with that. I started working with, uh, well, this was like seven years ago. The first time ever I started working with three to five year olds. And uh, at the time it was daunting. But a right. lot of the skills I developed working with that age group, I've implemented now working with older kids. And it's re really helped. Uh, Probably most importantly, patience. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. That, and you patient. need that as a coach because you're, yeah. you're going to have difficult clients. Like That's just part of the, the deal. You can't run away from that. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're paying you, so you can't, you know, they're paying for a service. So you need to provide a good service. You can't decide, okay. no, I don't want, I mean, you can decide not to work with someone, but if you're in the middle of a session and they're being difficult, you can't just yeah. end it. Like, you need to be able to get through through that. And sometimes they need, patience and they need, need someone to get through to them mm -hmm. and then and then they'll, they'll they'll be all right but sometimes they're difficult and that and you need to be able to work with that uh which is you know that's part of coaching 100 percent, definitely agree perfect all right so matt last question for you is where do you see your business in the next five years from now yeah i definitely see uh adding more clients uh, building up that, but I, I also see myself doing more uh, group training camps. Mm -hmm. um, I see the business doing um, maybe more like some, some consulting, mm -hmm. uh, working with clubs and just helping them build their, their goalkeeper program, um, creating, uh, you know, a, a goalkeeper um Kind of like manifesto or building like out a, a framework for how goalkeeping is going to work in the club mm -hmm. so kind of more of like a bigger scale bigger picture type stuff yeah perfect awesome all right love that and then my question for you it's a personal one is what does failure mean to you uh failure uh means growth 
that, that, that's all you're doing when you're failing is you're growing you're, and growing is painful, you know, in a literal sense, you know, when you're younger and you have growing pains, you know, mm -hmm. your, your, your bones are getting bigger. That's just the way it goes. So it's the same thing with everything else. So if you're, if you're failing, yeah, it's going to hurt in the moment and, it, and it's going to be a struggle. But when you look back at it, you're like, okay, that was growth. Yeah. You know, everything in hindsight is, I learned from that. I went through that tough experience and now I'm at this point. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's definitely growth to me. Awesome. I love that. I love asking that because I love, love the responses of coaches when, when I ask that. <laughs> awesome. Man. All right. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you for, for sharing your story with us. Uh, I know coaches watching this will get inspiration from it. They'll definitely uh, take a lot of your, your tips and advice. Now, if any coach wants to either reach out to you or wants to follow your, your business, where, what is the best way to do that? Where can they find sure. you? Sure. Yeah, so I would say follow me on Instagram. On, uh, it's just MJR Keeper Academy. Um, and then if you want to watch my training sessions, I put a lot of them on my YouTube page. That's also MJR Keeper Academy. And then you can email me, uh, which is mjrkeeper at gmail.com. Awesome. And also you have a podcast for, for goalkeepers. That's correct. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So my podcast is called uh, Goalkeeper Secrets. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're short episodes. They're like 13 minutes yeah. average length. And they're just like quick little um, topics about the, menta the mental side of goalkeeping. How mm -hmm. do we handle certain situations? You know, everything. And, and I mean, really, you could apply it to any sport, but I'm talking specifically to goalkeepers. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. awesome all right perfect well matt good luck with with everything uh, moving forward uh, wish you all the best and hope to connect with you in the future awesome yeah it sounds good thank you for having me on i appreciate it perfect all right take care